Hello everyone! Today's solo episode is inspired by Eva O'Brien's podcast Happier at Work and her solo podcast episodes. If you have not followed her podcast, I highly recommend you to do so. Eva has been a guest on my podcast and I have had the honor to be interviewed by her on her podcast as well. I want to use today's solo episode to ask you a few questions to ponder about regarding flexible work. When someone mentions part-time work, what comes to your mind? What type of job? What qualifications for the job? What job position? Who do you think would apply for part-time positions. Once you have thought about this, I am curious about the why behind your thoughts. Do you know someone who works part-time? Are you aware of a company that offers a part-time career? If so, what job level is offered as a part-time position. This week I saw a video about an organization that was struggling to hire more people. It required on-site work. After some debate, they decided to start offering a new shorter shift that was targeting moms as potential employees who may have school-age kids. This part-time work allowed the moms to drop off the kids at school, work their shift and pick them up on time. Interviews were conducted with the moms and managers with the company. Overall, everyone perceived the new part-time shift model as very positive. It did require some juggling of the shift setup and there were reskilling and upskilling moments involved. What I found most interesting was the comment of one manager saying that the majority of the part-timers took their part-time job very seriously. So why is it the fact that someone who is unable to work a full-time position automatically gets equated with the perception that he or she may not be a dedicated, motivated, or even as qualified as someone who is working 9 to 5. How can we get more role models to bust these myths? And at the same time, many organizations are struggling to attract and retain talent during the Great Resignation. How many companies have thought about widening the flexibility criteria? Zurich UK did that very thing two years ago by adding six words to their job ads. Part-time, flexible work and job sharing. They found that it helped them attract more applicants across all job levels as well as genders. And their change attracted stories written about them in numerous media outlets around the world and basically gave them free advertising for their jobs. And talking about media exposure, just this past week, Apple saw a senior tech employee resign and he pointed out that more flexibility would have been helpful. As currently Apple is starting to require their employees to come back three days a week. And at the same time, Airbnb has recently announced that people can, that their people can work from home or from the office based on their choice and they can live anywhere in the country where they're employed with no change in pay. And Salesforce has decided to offer jobs no longer by the cities, but by time zones. 
LinkedIn has now, when you look for jobs, a button that allows you to look whether or not a job is on-site, hybrid, or remote. Have you tried to see how many remote positions are actually being offered as part-time positions? And what job levels are they? Many, especially female professionals, had to opt out during the pandemic due to limited or non-existent childcare. Seeing more remote jobs being offered is certainly helpful, but the reality is that childcare is a full-time job. And if there is a continuation of scarcity of childcare places, it will continue that thousands of highly experienced and qualified professionals who are interested in returning or staying in a paid position will not be able to do so because they cannot find a part-time position according to the potential they have. So when we look at SAP in Germany, they are requiring that every managerial position needs to be written as a potential job sharing position. Several German car companies have now senior leaders who manage their teams in co-leaderships. Other German companies that include job sharing and top sharing as part of their flexible work models include the German train organization Bayersdorf and Bosch. Thanks to a Guardian article shared by Rollshare, I learned that while three quarters of a million people in the UK work part-time in senior and mission-critical positions at the same time, a time-wise consulting company audit poll found that half of the participants did not think it was possible to have a part-time career. Now, where do we stand at the moment? The pandemic is not appearing to be going away anytime soon. What is going to happen if more professionals due to healthcare challenges as well as lack of childcare require part-time work and therefore either will continue to opt out or is uh, or unable to return back to paid work. It will give trailblazing companies in North America and beyond significant competitive advantages if they are offering part-time positions beyond the entry level. I also believe that more returnships need to be offered that include part-time and or job sharing returnship options. I would love to hear your ideas and thoughts. And as some of you may be aware, every Friday at 9 Pacific time, noon Eastern, I am hosting the Future of Work Walk, where I use the LinkedIn audio event feature as a beta tester to talk with people around the world about future of work topics. And we often speak about flexible work and other aspects that create a more diverse and gender equal workplace. It would be wonderful to hear you there. I also will be certain to put all the articles that I mentioned in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We hope you gained valuable insights and new ideas. To keep listening to future episodes, please head over to iTunes or your favorite player and subscribe and give it a rating. We would very much appreciate a review and for you to share it on social media so more people can start innovating in how they offer employment. Until the next time, goodbye.